Hi guys, it's Julie, and today we're making one of my favorite meals in the entire world. I just love tikka, and if you've never tried it, please give this recipe a try. It's delicious. So let's get started. So I just want to quickly say that I do make this kind of different from most people, but I give you my word that this is exceptionally good. All right, let's start by marinating the chicken. I'm using boneless, skinless chicken breast, plain yogurt, Kashmiri chili powder, ginger garlic paste, salt, and Indian curry powder. That is just to marinate the chicken. So in goes the spices, the ginger garlic paste, along with the yogurt. Give it a quick whisk, and then we're going to place the chicken in there. I do use garam masala later on. Curry powder may or may not be common for chicken tikka masala, but I always have it on hand. I love it. I've experimented with chicken tikka masala countless times, and I finally mastered it to my liking. I did taste it just to see how it was with the salt. If you feel like it needs a little bit more salt, go ahead and add it. Now we are going to place the chicken in our marinated yogurt. Try to use plain yogurt, not Greek yogurt. And now we are going to cover this and refrigerate it for a minimum of one hour, preferably overnight. I did about three hours and it was perfect, but definitely the longer you marinate it for, the tastier it'll be. An hour later or the following day, you want to let the chicken come to almost room temperature before cooking it because you never want to cook iced cold protein. It will cook unevenly and it will shrink. So let's place the chicken on a baking sheet and you want to place it under the broiler for 10 to 15 minutes depending on your oven. You just want the yogurt to completely absorb and you want to just discard the yogurt you use to marinate the chicken. Oh, and before we place it in the uh, oven, you want to just squeeze some lemon juice over the chicken. I do cook a lot of Indian Food at home so I have a pantry stocked with Indian spices however if you don't have a certain ingredient feel free to leave it out or substitute it for the powder spice instead so here I have a star anise a cinnamon stick black peppercorns cumin seeds and coriander seeds so again if you don't have cumin seeds you may do just cumin powder all right, so now with some vegetable oil, we are going to saute the spices for about 40 seconds. Go ahead and add the shallots. And now let's quickly talk about tomatoes. I've never seen anyone use cherry or grape tomatoes. Mostly people just use regular tomatoes. However, cherry and grape are sweeter and I like my chicken tikka masala sweet and spicy, a little on the tomato-y side. I might have made up a word just now, but that's okay. And we're also going to add fresh ginger and fresh garlic because I love fresh ginger and fresh garlic. Uh, I feel like the ginger garlic paste is a little bit more potent, but we did use that to marinate the chicken. So for the sauce, I just wanted to use it uh, fresh. I added three green chilies. I left the seeds in. It's not that spicy. When I make lamb vindaloo, I use about eight green chilies. I love spicy food. Nice excuse to drink beer too. If you notice, those shallots are chopped pretty ridiculous, only because we're going to blend all of this, except for some things we're going to fish out in a couple of seconds. Go ahead and add some bay leaves. And now you want to add the fresh garlic and ginger. I'm a little behind. The exact recipe along with instructions will be over on my website, cookbyjulie.com. Go ahead and add some tomato paste. And now let's talk about cashews. In my opinion, if you use cashews, there is no need to use heavy cream or butter. No, I'm not turning vegan or a health cashew, but trust me, this will taste like straight comfort food without adding any cream or butter, and that is great. All right, let's season this with salt, add some water, some garam masala, and we are going to cook this mixture for about 20 minutes over low heat. 20 minutes later, please remove the bay leaves, the star anise, and the cinnamon stick. 20 minutes later, remove this from the heat, let it cool a bit. Remember to remove the bay leaves, cinnamon stick, and the star anise. And we're then going to blend this and pass it through a sieve. If it looks a bit grainy, it's because of the cashews. That is perfectly fine. Cashews are healthy. I used unsalted cashews. Feel free to add butter and heavy cream, although honestly, it doesn't need it because this is very rich as is. 
don't have to pass the sauce through a sieve, but I don't like a chunky tikka masala. I feel like it should be silky smooth. Now, if you don't want to add cashews, completely omit them and use heavy cream, about half a cup that will lighten the sauce and make it creamy. This chicken was so good just like this. It definitely should not be bland. We're going to add the chicken to the sauce. Check for seasoning. If it needs additional salt, add it. My sauce definitely needed salt because I believe I only seasoned it. I see it before I blended it. Let's simmer the chicken in the sauce on low heat for about 15 minutes and then we're done. I urge you to give this a try. Look how good it looks. I mean, it was ridiculously good. I hate saying that things are to die for, but it really was. I can't even. So good. This was comfort food at its best. It was a tad bit spicy, but it's also a bit sweet because of the tomatoes, just how I like it. It was perfect. Definitely give this a try. Serve it with some naan or basmati rice. I served it with basmati rice because I didn't have the ingredients to make garlic naan. And I sprinkled some cilantro over the top. And that was about it. Please let me know if you make this recipe. I'll love you forever. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I want to thank you all so much for watching.